Hello everybody. This will be the final video in our sequence of videos proving the monotone convergence theorem. Uh, but, well, it, it's kind of a trick here because we've already proved the monotone convergence theorem. Uh, let me state it quickly and then you'll, you'll see why from the other videos I've posted uh, everything has already been done. So if you have some sequence of real numbers uh, and if you know that that sequence converges, then the sequence must be bounded from both above and below. We have a video that says exactly that. Um, second is if you know that A is increasing or possibly decreasing, and when it's increasing, you know that it's bounded from above, or when it's decreasing, bounded from below, then A has to converge to its supremum, or if you're in the second case, to its infimum. Well, those are exactly like the last two videos that I posted. So the monotone convergence theorem, we've already proved it. Right? So this is going to be a very useful uh, result, particularly part B. Right. So as soon as you want to show that a sequence converges, all you need to do is show that it's increasing and bounded from above or decreasing and bounded from below. Right? That'll be enough. So instead of just stopping the video a minute in and just saying, ha-ha, we've done it, uh, let's, let's show an application of the monotone convergence theorem. Right? So I'm going to define uh, a sequence. So we'll call it x sub n. Okay? And the sequence is going to be, uh, or the nth term of the sequence, um, is going to be 1 plus 1 over n raised to the nth power. What I would like to do is to show that this sequence is increasing and bounded from above. All right. uh, in order to show it's increasing, I'm, I'm going to use a very useful result uh, for showing inequalities, and it's called the AM-GM inequality. So the AM uh, is going to stand for the arithmetic mean, and the GM is going to stand for the geometric mean. So let's say that I have a bunch of numbers. Uh, now these X's are not the same as the ones on the other side, so maybe I should call these like A's. So I have some A1, A2, through AN, which are all at least zero. Well, I can form their arithmetic mean, that is their average. So, right, so I just add them up, so a1 plus a2, etc., through an, and divide by n. I could also form what's called their geometric mean. So the geometric mean is when you multiply them all together. So I do a1 times a2 times through an, and then I take the nth root of that product. And the amgm inequality says that when you do this computation, you will always get that the geometric mean is less than or equal to the arithmetic mean. All right? And the only way you can get equality, so with equality, only when all of the numbers you started with are just the same number. So when a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a n. So assuming you're not in that situation, then you must actually have a strict uh, inequality over here. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to look at the, the xn term of the sequence. So that is uh, 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And I want to compare it with the n plus first term. Right? This is how I'm going to show that it's, it's increasing. And, and I'm going to play a, just a silly trick here. I'm going to write this as 1 times 1 plus 1 over n times 1 plus 1 over n times, and I keep going, and I get finish with 1 plus 1 over n, and I've done this n times. Okay, So this, these latter n factors give us exactly the 1 plus 1 over n to the n, and then I just seemingly arbitrarily threw in an extra times 1. And the reason I did this is to give me n plus 1 terms. All right, and that's going to how I'm, I'm going to compare things with xn plus 1. Now, let's head back over to the AMGM inequality for a moment. And note, here I've taken an nth root, but if I wanted to get rid of it, I could just raise both sides to the n power. So equivalently, we would have a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus a n over n, the, GM, or the arithmetic mean of uh, a1 through a n. If I raise that to the n power, 
that will be bigger than the product of a1 with a2 dot 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 with a n. All right, so in my case, I don't actually have n terms. I actually want to have n plus 1 terms, right? I have these n, and then I threw again in this, this, this times 1 just to make things weird, all right? But by the amgm inequality, I know that if I multiply n non-negative things together, and of course these are all non-negative, that will be less than, they're not equal, right? We're not in the equality case because 1 does not equal uh, 1 plus 1 over n. Uh, this will be less than what happens if I take the average of all of these things and raise it to the, in this case, n plus first power, because there's n plus 1 terms. So to get the average, I need to add these all up. So first, I notice all these have a 1 in them. There's n ones from these n factors plus one more 1. So that's n plus 1. But then I also have n copies of 1 over n. So that gives me another 1. And then I divide by the total number of terms, which is n plus 1. And then I raise this to the n plus 1 power. All right, I can rewrite this. n plus 1 over n plus 1 is 1. So I get 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. And isn't this sneaky? This is the x n plus 1 term. All right, that would be the n plus first term of the sequence. And so we've just shown that xn is strictly less than xn plus 1. And so this implies that xn is an increasing sequence. How neat is that? All right, so now by the monotone convergence theorem, we just need to show that it's bounded from above. So the way I'm going to do this is by actually writing down a couple more related sequences and building one which I know is going to be bigger than x sub n. Okay, so here's my, my second sequence. Uh, we're going to call it y sub n. So y sub n is going to look just like x sub n, only I'm going to sneak a minus n. All right, so I have, uh, it'll be the sequence whose nth term is 1 minus 1 over n to the n. So I claim this is also an increasing sequence. How do I prove it? Well, the exact same way as we did before. So y sub n is 1 minus 1 over n to the n, which I write as 1 times 1 minus 1 over n times, etc. 1 minus 1 over n. There are n copies. And so again, I can use the amgm inequality. So amgm inequality. And let's see, I add everything up, and I get n copies, or n plus 1 copies of 1, again. Uh, now, though, I have n copies of minus 1 over n, so I get a minus 1. And we're still dividing by n plus 1, and we're raising it to the n plus first power. All right, let's see, n plus 1 over n plus 1 is 1, so this is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, raised to the n plus 1, and... Sure enough, that is y n plus 1. And so y n is less than y n plus 1. And so again, we conclude that y n is an increasing sequence. All right, one more sequence, and that's, we're going to call it z sub n. So the z sub n sequence is going to look just like x sub n. Only I play this nasty trick of raising it not to the n, but to the n plus first power. And so what I claim is that this sequence is actually going to be a decreasing sequence. All right, so how do we see that? Well, again, let's start with a z sub n. So this is equal to uh, 1 plus 1 over n to the n plus first power. And... Let me combine what's inside the parentheses. I'll make this uh, n plus 1 over n, again, raised to the n plus first power. And now I do a weird trick. I'm going to write down the reciprocal. All right. So this is the same thing as 1 over n over n plus 1. So that's what I mean by writing down the reciprocal. I, I want to, nope, I have this backwards. Oh, no, that's correct. Excuse me. Um, I want to write it as n over n plus 1. And uh, to do that, of course, I need to you know, make this one over it. 
All right, now here's the, the, the trick. I'm going to toss in a plus one and a minus one. All right, and when I do that, I now have an n plus one over n plus one. So I can write this now as one over, okay, n plus one over n plus one is one, minus one over n plus one raised to the n plus one power. And the reason I did this is because this term, right, this term on the bottom, which, okay, let me distribute in this, uh, this n plus one. This is one over one minus one over n plus one to the n plus one power. This is precisely our y sub n plus one. One minus one over n plus one to the n plus one. So this is equal to y n plus one. Now, uh, one over it, excuse me. So this tells me that my zn term is just one over the n plus first term of y. But remember, this sequence yn is increasing. So if we look at the reciprocal sequence, it must be decreasing. So it follows that the zn sequence is decreasing. Right? If you're the reciprocal of an increasing sequence, you are a decreasing sequence. Okay, so now what is the connection between our original sequence, xn, and z sub n? All right, so remember, let's recall, the nth term of the x sequence is 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. And the nth term of the z sequence is 1 plus 1 over n to the n plus first power. But this is the same thing as 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power times 1 plus 1 over n. And of course, 1 plus 1 over n is, is certainly greater than 1, right? It's a 1 over n greater than 1. And so when I multiply by something greater than 1, I'm going to get something greater than what I started with. All right? And what is this? This is x sub n. So this product is greater than x sub n. So this tells me that my zn sequence, right, is greater than the xn sequence, right? So it is, if I choose any particular n, I know that zn is going to be bigger than xn. Now, what if we had some m which was different than n, right? Say um, m was less than n. So if m is less than n, then what do we know about x sub m? Well, since x is an increasing sequence, then we know that x sub m is going to be less than x sub n, which is equal, or excuse me, which is less than z sub n. So in this case, we also know that when m is less than n, all the x sub m's will be less than the z sub n's. What if m was greater than n? So if x is greater than m, then since we know that x sub m is less than z sub m, and since we know that z is a decreasing sequence, then z sub m has to be actually less than z sub n. So once again, right, we know that the x sub m will be less than the z sub n. So this tells us that every element of x right, the sequence for x has to be less than every element of the sequence for z. So thus, every uh, uh, term in the sequence, right, so every, we'll say term in x sub n is less than every term in z. Okay. So, in particular, we know that the terms in Z all bound the terms in X. So, if we can just take any term in Z, it will be an upper bound for X, right? In fact, we can let's just take Z sub 1, all right? So, Z sub 1, this is equal to 1 plus 1 over N, uh, 1, to the 1 plus 1. That would be uh, 2 to the 2, which is 4. Okay, so we have 
x sub n less than or equal to 4 for all n. Thus, x sub n is an increasing sequence that is bounded from above. All right, we even have a bound 4, but we can do better than that. It's bounded from above. And so, by the monotone convergence theorem, we know that the sequence, uh, convergence theorem, we know that the sequence x sub n converges. Okay, um, let's give a, a picture of this. Let's head over to Desmos for a minute. Okay, so here I have plotted the values of the two sequences, x, those are in blue, and z, those are in green. And as we had predicted, uh, all the values of x lie below all the values of z. Uh, this z sub 1, that's what we established was equal to 4, so that was an upper bound. It's certainly not the least upper bound, right? We know, in fact, from the monotone convergence theorem, that the sequence x is going to converge to its supremum. And that supremum should be considerably less than 4. Uh, now, looking here at the chart, right, we can see, oh boy, it, it looks like it's getting above, well, let's see, between 2 and 3, maybe that's 2.6. Looks like it is going slightly above 2.6. And it turns out that if we went a little bit further, we would get that this converges to something around 2.7, 1.8, 2.8, 1828459045 dot 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 which should sound familiar all right that least upper bound that supremum for x is actually e so this sequence x sub n is often called the euler sequence And the limit of the sequence, so the limit as n goes to infinity, of 1 plus 1 over n to the n is what we call e. All right, so about 2.71. Right. So this actually proves that when you take this limit, it exists. Right. It's going to converge to some value, and whatever that value is is what we call E, and of course we can approximate E, one way at least, is by taking large values of N. Um, you can also, as we just saw though, actually take large values of N in the Z sequence to get an upper bound on the value of, of E. So that, that's something that can be, can be useful. All right, well hopefully this... Uh, helps you to see how we might use the monotone convergence theorem to shore up some of the foundations that uh, often are overlooked when we, we first learn about things like, like E.